Arm and Cadence both had uh, interrelated automotive announcement. Uh, Arm, as we've seen, right, recently uh, public company, again, just crushing it, right? If you remember, uh, I think it was last month, uh, Daniel, that the uh, stock price just freaking rocketed, I mean, after, after their earnings. And a lot of that has to do with uh, getting new sockets, gaining market share, but it also has to do a lot with the sophistication of the IP that, that, that they're offering. And essentially what they did uh, on the automotive side is, is they brought out uh, three things. So uh, new uh, automotive enhanced uh, processors with the V9 uh, architecture. And the second was is putting uh, CSS, which is their ARM compute subsystems, which is a product where they deliver more uh, validation, uh, requires less work uh, on, on the licensee, and they're able to uh, charge a higher price. The third thing they did, uh, which re reminds me a little bit of what uh, Qualcomm is doing with uh, AWS, is, is they're enabling uh, software testing uh, that's cloud-based as opposed to waiting the two years it might take to uh, crank out uh, a chip or um, uh, a, a chiplet uh, to be able to uh, uh, test. So uh, now, you know, you've got uh, ARM really going, and I like their, I like their expression of this uh, bumper to bumper, right? All the way from an auto MCU, which is a low, very low end uh, controller that you know sometimes competes with uh, with an FPGA to zonal controllers, and that's essentially hey, you know something like braking system, right? If you have a disaggregated design to computer vision, right, where it's you know they add the ISP and uh, you can even add a add a third party NPU uh, to the cockpit uh, L2 and and full uh, autonomy, so. You know, are making a huge uh, move here. If you look at their growth uh, over the last couple quarters, at least the discussion was, sure, there was growth even in declining market in smartphones because you had people going with bigger cores, uh, but you had data center and you have uh, automotive. So good progress uh, from the company. By the way, it was really cool to see ARM's highest performance server processors, right? The same IP that's used, let's say, at AWS for Neoverse, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, ARM Neoverse used in, in Graviton uh, being put in here. And I think uh, this uh, puts ARM and Qualcomm even at more odds, <laughs> I, you know, I feel, uh, uh, the two companies kind of kind of colliding. Uh, there was a uh, related announcement uh, by Cadence that uh, essentially, so ARM doesn't do the chiplet, but um, Cadence has a software development platform and a reference design for ADAS. So if you are a tier one, if you are a chip maker and you're looking to uh, increase and enhance time to market, you can use uh, Cadence's platform uh, to do this. And the other cool thing uh, some people might know is um, uh, Cadence actually has its own NPU, and it's called uh, Neo Neural Processing Unit, or uh, NPU, and then has an SDK called NeuroWeave uh, for machine learning. And they also bring DSPs to the table. So not only can you use their tools, but you can also use Cadence's IP to accelerate your ARM-based design. Isn't it crazy how, like, the new power players in there are IP companies and companies that can, that that you don't even have to be a chip company. You know, you could be a Tesla and use their software to pull uh, all this stuff together. Well, I think that's really what it's all about. I mean, look, there's the new power brokers. And by the way, there's a desire for the power broker to pivot, right? Nobody wants to be over-dependent. Um, you know, the world has seen, you know, let's just talk about ARM's announcements around vehicles. Well, first of all, ARM, it's all about moving up the stack. It's all about being more value add, more white glove, offering more services and being able to raise its core value, literally 
core value across everything it does and make more per core um, per license uh, and be able to bring more companies in to use its IP to develop chips. I mean, look, we're seeing a world where manufacturing of silicon used to be for a very small number of players. And now you're seeing that broaden and be democratized and companies and industry vertical solutions are being built, you know, chips for robotics, chips for IoT, chips for vehicles, chips for PCs, chips for wearables, hearables, VR, AR. And it's opened the door to lots of companies creating unique designs. And these unique designs enable differentiation. You know, historically speaking, there was a very small subset of, of chip manufacturers you could work with. And unless you had a certain size and scale of business, you couldn't even consider building something custom. Well, now we're seeing obviously what ARM's enabling from a custom, what Cadence Synopsis enable from an IP standpoint. We're hearing you know, companies like Marvell and maybe NVIDIA that are entering custom to help actually design custom chips. You've seen over time uh, gaming console makers partnering up with companies like AMD to design custom chips for custom gaming console technologies. And over time, the point is what it's done is it's opened up the world. So there was a period where there was a few companies that could basically develop ADAS technology uh, build the silicon and then develop the software. And, and you know, in, there was an era of NVIDIA, NVIDIA and Tesla. Then Tesla went out and they figured out it could do it on its own because it got enough scale and size. It could design its own its own silicon. And you don't think companies like BMW and GM and Ford and, and, and Stellantis are all looking at this right now. I mean, you know, right now there are a lot of them are partnering. Um, of course, we haven't seen a design pipeline bigger than Qualcomm's. But, you know, they're looking at it. They're looking and considering what gives them the ultimate amount of flexibility. This is why the digital chassis, flexible building blocks is so important. And Arm is saying, look, we're, we're going to offer something too. We're going to enable this. We're going to empower this. This is what the future looks like. And Arm is moving in that direction. Having said that, Arm's also getting more expensive. Uh, people are noting it. I think I saw something yesterday about Sci Fi having a super large bump in its uh, licensing business this year. Um, why is that? Well, as ARM gains strength and has grown market and has more business and has driven more revenue and increased licensing value, um, there are more people looking for lower cost open source options and you're seeing it open up the floodgates for risk five. This is an exciting world, Pat. I mean, this is an exciting demand driven world where companies that really historically had nothing to do with chip making and chip design can find themselves in the chip making chip design business because of what IP providers, licensing providers, um, fabs, foundries have basically opened up to the world. And of course, with Silicon Eat in the world, Pat, this is pretty cool. Yeah, some of the uh, chip makers that were were in the press release were Marvell, MediaTek, NVIDIA, NXP, Renesis, Telechips, and TI. Um, you know, note that uh, Qualcomm is, is, is not uh, in there. So essentially, ARM, ARM is being the ARM's dealer uh, to these companies related to uh, the automotive space. Competition is good. You know, I'm just amazed, Daniel, at the, uh, at the business model and the math works out for, for non-chip makers, right? That's got to be a little disturbing. And, you know, we've never actually seen anybody talk about, you know, so for instance, uh, AWS doesn't say, hey, here's how much money I put in, and then here's what I got out, either cost savings, time to market, uh, something uh, like that, but uh, given that somebody like AWS has been doing it for so long, I sure can't imagine that they would they would do something that loses lost money for ten years. Yeah, well, I I think this is going to be a really hot space to watch, Pat. I think it's 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 just it's just getting very very exciting. And like I said, every new architecture, every new licensee and licensor of technology. It just goes to show, Pat, that while the world was thinking software would eat it, you and I knew what would really eat it. And uh, you know, I haven't done a victory lap on that in almost a week. So let's call it one more time right now. Just, you know, hey, you know something about silicon. I do. I do. Some people might uh, say I don't know something about silicon, but I don't know. I just I worked for a company for 11 years that did silicon ran product management, product marketing, corporate strategy, go to market. I mean, what do I know, Dan? And you know, I, before that, I worked 10 years for a company where I specified which processors would go into my platform. I don't know. What, what do I want? I was a customer, a competitor. Now I'm a pundit. I don't know. What do I know? Let's move to the next. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, sarcasm is what I learned in the Midwest. It's what we do. It's our humor. To get my love language, Pat. 
Sarcasm is my love language. Get over the sadness of uh, there being no jobs. <laughs>